for those of you who don't know Bodybuilder in Thailand, his real name is Dan and he runs a very small YouTube fitness channel and his channel falls under the pro steroid category of YouTube fitness where he openly admits to using steroids and he talks about steroids relatively frequently while doing his vlogs. And I think he's best known on YouTube for doing collaboration videos with Tony from Enhanced Athlete. And the reason I'm making this video today is because Dan, a bodybuilder in Thailand, is very likely going to have his leg amputated due to an infection caused by steroid use. And there's also a very real possibility that he could die if doctors aren't able to treat this infection and it spreads to the rest of his body. And I'll just share Dan's video where he explains the situation he's in. Hello guys, this is Dan, the bodybuilder in Thailand, and uh, I'm currently in the hospital, and I'm in a really bad situation. And uh, my leg is very hurt, and I'm in the process of having surgeries. I had one surgery that all the money that I had and it ended up being a failure and the stitches in my leg ripped open and I have new necrotic dying flesh growing inside of me. I'm here in, in Colombia, I'm alone out here in Colombia and um, I had a bad injection of dirty gear in my leg and it grew into a necrotic um, thing in my leg that's spreading through me and I need more surgeries <laughs> and I can't afford them And I'm just putting this out here just to let you guys know that I have a GoFundMe in case you'd like to help. Thanks. Now, obviously, I don't agree with all of Dan's lifestyle choices, but I do sympathize with the situation he's in. A few years ago, I had an E. coli infection in my left leg, and I nearly uh, had to have that leg amputated because it was an antibiotic-resistant strain of E. coli, and I was also really lucky that the infection didn't spread to the rest of my body. So these sorts of things uh, can happen whether you take steroids or not. And I do encourage everyone to go to Dan's GoFundMe campaign so that he can get the medical help he needs. And I, uh, I left a link in the description down below. Now, obviously, he did make some stupid decisions. I think it was stupid for him to take steroids, especially if they were gotten on the illicit market. And it was stupid for him not to have medical insurance, especially with the, the kind of lifestyle he leads. Uh, but we all make stupid mistakes. I don't think he deserves to die a slow, painful death and have his body literally rot away uh, just because he made this you know, stupid mistake. So uh, hopefully he pulls through and hopefully he ends up watching this video and makes some lifestyle changes to prevent this sort of thing from ever happening again. Now, obviously I'm against steroid use. I advise people not to take them for various health related reasons. And one of the reasons that I haven't really talked about yet is the risk of infection. According to this paper that was published back in 1999 in the International Journal of Sports Medicine, a literature review dating between 1966 to 1998 found only 14 case reports of infection attributable to anabolic steroid injection, and infections included HIV, hepatitis B and C, abscesses, and a fungal infection of the eye. The authors also noted that no cross-sectional or prospective studies exist that document the risk of infections related to anabolic androgenic steroid injection, but from the data that is available, infections occurring in anabolic steroid users are not as common as in intravenous drug users. Now, most of these infections were caused by needle sharing and other unsterile injection techniques, and if these steroid users were following proper injection procedures, most of them would have avoided these infections, 
but there were a couple cases where infection was most likely due to contamination of the drug supply, where contamination occurred at the factory that these drugs were produced, and these drugs also have a suppressing effect on the immune system, making infection more likely. A deep gluteal abscess occurred in a steroid user who was injecting testosterone. The physician treating the patient suspected a contaminated drug supply, and it was found to contain a bacterial culture and was counterfeit by the manufacturer. Another steroid user suffered a fungal infection in his eye. He had a two-year history of steroid use where he would frequently cycle stanozolol, decadroblin, clenbuterol, and testosterone. The authors suspected that this unusual infection may have been related to immune suppression secondary to long-term steroid use. Both of these situations seem to apply to Dan from Bodybuilder in Thailand. He is a long-term steroid user and he likely has decreased immunity from frequent long-term steroid use and he has unfortunately injected himself with a contaminated batch of drugs that he uh, likely got on the illicit market. So even, uh, even though steroid users do have much lower rates of infection compared to other intravenous drug users, and even if you are using proper sterile needle use procedures, you can still suppress your immune system and get a dirty or contaminated batch of these drugs which could lead to a very serious infection and could cause limb amputation or even death. Now, again, as far as I'm aware, there currently aren't any cross-sectional or prospective studies documenting the risk of infection from anabolic steroid use, so I can't say uh, to any great degree of accuracy how common infections occur, uh, even with proper needle use but I think what happened to Dan highlights a huge cultural and legal issue with steroids. Because there is a huge market for steroids and because steroids have been made illegal in many countries, including the US, most of the steroids on the market are made illegally and they aren't made in reputable labs that use proper sterilization procedures and have methods in place to prevent dirty or contaminated batches from going out onto the market. Even the authors from the paper I just shared mentioned this issue. In the 1980s, strict government policies were developed to curtail anabolic steroid use. These regulations decreased the production of anabolic steroids by domestic pharmaceutical companies and diminished their availability to recreational users the resulting demand was filled by an illegal market not scrutinized by the Food and Drug Administration, the quality of these drugs is suspect, and impurities, infectious agents, toxins, and mislabeled dosages occur. So it only makes sense to legalize these drugs to create a much safer drug market. If these drugs were legal and you could walk into any pharmacy and get these drugs, no questions asked, chances are uh, infections like what Dan has would become much less common. Uh, making drugs illegal does nothing to curtail drug use. All you're doing is creating an illicit drug market, which makes these drugs much more dangerous, which goes against the whole point of banning the drugs in the first place. And on top of that, because these drugs are illegal, it's much more difficult to get advice on how to properly and safely take these drugs. Uh, a lot of fucking people who take steroids don't know how to properly use needles because they're not getting these drugs from a doctor who can teach them proper extraction and injection techniques. They're just getting them from random fucking drug dealers who are also selling crack and heroin who don't give a fuck about the health and safety of their clients. According to the same paper, 25% of anabolic steroid users share needles. And to give you an idea of how common steroid use is and the potential potential for so many people to improperly use needles, here's a case report out of the UK where in the discussion section of the paper they discuss needle sharing programs. There are no exact figures available on the scale of use, but needle exchange programs in many cities are noticing that often the largest single group visiting are intramuscular steroid injectors overtaking opiate users, in some cases up to 60% of the client base are anabolic steroid users. So given all of this information, I think the risk of infection from injecting anabolic steroids is still relatively high, even though it is lower than with other intravenous drugs. And I think it's something that you should uh, consider before choosing to take steroids. 
a huge portion of steroid users don't know how to use needles, and that is an issue that's directly associated with them being illegal. And on top of that, because there is such a huge illicit market, you can't really trust the safety of these drugs. And I think Dan is as much a victim of his poor choices as he is a victim of a bad drug market caused by illegalization. And although the situation that Dan is in appears to be fairly uncommon, you do have to recognize that there still isn't really any good data to show us the actual risk of infection uh, from taking anabolic steroids. All, all we really have to go on are a number of case reports and is the risk of infection worth gaining a bit of extra muscle? For me, it isn't. I've dealt with really serious infections before, and I can tell you from personal experience, it's not fun sitting in a hospital bed for several weeks in extreme, constant pain uh, with a really high fever and having to worry about getting a limb amputated. So with all of that said, I know that despite these risks, people are still going to want to take steroids, and there are ways to attenuate these risks. Uh, for one thing, I would say that it's absolutely necessary to learn proper needle use procedures. That seems to be the most common cause of infection, improper needle use. So, of course, it's best to learn this from a doctor, and it's also best to get your steroids from a doctor. I know this might be uh, pretty difficult and more expensive for some of you, um, but is it worth the risk of these sorts of infections? Again, for me personally, I don't think so, and if Dan ends up losing one of his limbs or dying, I'm sure he would also think that it wasn't worth the risk either. And if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store. And as always, keep making those vegan and natty gains. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.